Hi guys, welcome to this review about this Evercross electric scooter. I'm doing this thing uh, fully outside this review for the first time. Uh, yeah, the weather is a little bit windy, it's hot, it's humid, it's crazy, it's Florida, it's February, but it feels like summer. I hope you still can understand me, it almost blows me away, it's insane. So anyway, I didn't take uh, many rides, but two or three rather longer rides and it was really good and reliable. It's not perfect, what we have to know, it's pretty easy when it comes in the box. Uh, there's not much to assemble here, there's just the handlebar. I mean, there are these two handles here, which you have, and you have to basically screw them in here inside. Same thing for both of them. I'm not go doing that on the other side. You can see how this works. Same thing, it goes also to this side. No big deal. We have the display. I think it's a little bit difficult to see here in bright sunlight, but usually it's really easy to see. We have the battery indicator. We have the speed. Uh, we have this button here which you can use with a double press you can activate the light usually I don't know why it's not working of course always with the uh, video uh, Here we have the acceleration and here we have the brake Acceleration is pretty fast works pretty good. The brake is pretty tough It can be really harsh. You have to be really careful that it doesn't flip you over this is one big thing here we have to be careful i'm going to show you that later on by the way the speed acceleration yeah here it is it can be a little bit difficult to use because at the beginning there's not much going on and uh, you have to uh, really push far down and only then it's accelerating but it's accelerating pretty fast uh, it's only 350 watts uh, motor, but it is accelerating faster than my 400 watts skateboard and also the climbing speed. I will go and show you that in live. The climbing speed, the climbing uh, power is pretty tough. I mean, I think it's more than 350 watts, but anyway. In general, yeah, the scooter, I mean, it's, it's a nice one. It's good looking. It is sturdy, it's tough, it's uh, it's large, it's heavy. Yeah, here you can see my feet about the size. It is pretty large, definitely. It is larger than what I've been expecting and definitely heavier. But uh, still, I think this is the size which we can expect from an uh, electric scooter. Yeah, I'm trying here again with the light. It has been working previously, so I mean, anyway, to turn it on, we have to long press and then we double press here. And I'm trying this again. Uh, yeah, now we can see that here we have the light and double press will turn it off again. Yeah, it's a decent light, but not too crazy, by the way. It will also turn on the light here in the back. This thing here we can use to push down and brake. And the brake, of course, also this brake here will only go to the back wheel. It's not braking in the front. I mean, the front wheel, there's no acceleration, there's no uh, brake here. It's just totally independent. Everything uh, electric will just go to the back here, but the back is pretty strong, the acceleration and especially the brake. I, for myself, try to avoid this brake here because it's so rough. I'm always trying to use this brake here. By the way, there's one thing here with the acceleration. The acceleration here goes into an automatic cruise control. Uh, after a certain time, when you're at a specific speed, or actually the same speed, uh, for a couple of seconds, it will go into a cruise control. So there's no button where you can activate the cruise control. It just goes into the cruise control by itself. And there's no indication, there's no warning light, no nothing. Uh, let's say you're approaching an intersection and it is in the cruise control, you have to be really careful. If you're then just using the 
uh, back brake here that's not enough I can tell you because the engine or the motor is so strong it will totally eliminate the braking power the manual braking power so the only thing to stop this thing is to release the cruise control so let's say you're pushing this down and you are going to full speed and it's in cruise control you have to push again down again to release the cruise control there's no button here to release it just push down again and it will release the cruise control by the way here we have also a stand which is pretty safe but what's not so safe in my opinion is this lock mechanism here uh, it's really dangerous it can be in some kind of intermediate position you think it's locked and then you drive and after a minute or so it collapses it has happened to me and my son it's really dangerous and then of course uh, you're on down on the floor and it depends on how the floor is uh, how far you go how fast it breaks it can be really terrible yeah the way to release this thing here this green lock you have to push the handlebar to the front and then only you can use that so the easier thing is when you are uh, using when you have a helping hand so it's almost impossible to secure and release this alone my trick is to stand somewhere here in the back and then push the thing to the front and then have somebody to operate this handle thing but you have to be really careful you have to really make sure that this thing has snapped in that you hear a clicking noise that it has snapped in it can be in a really similar position and not locked so i'm going to start here a live demonstration and I'm starting here on the level one as you can see when I push here uh, I can go into level one that's the best thing to start and I'm just accelerating here I hope you can see that and uh, no matter how much I press it's not going faster than about 10 kilometers per hour by the way it's measuring the speed no matter if you are using the electric motor or not so if you are just going down uh, it will still show the speed so i'm pushing here for a long time and you can see at some point it goes into cruise control but it doesn't tell me the only thing when it goes into cruise control it will blink on the display you will see that now it is blinking and you can see it's in the cruise control and i don't have to push here uh, the only way to release it is to either push down again here or i can also push this button here so instead of going into like second gear i mean it has done it but it has released the cruise control now i'm in second gear by the way you can also change gears while you're pushing this fully down i mean while you're still accelerating you could technically with the other hand go into gear two and three it's a little bit dangerous i definitely don't recommend to release the handlebar it's not very safe i mean i have been doing that a couple of times just uh, cruising with one hand and then maybe give some signs uh, greet other people or so but it's really dangerous I would not recommend to do that so I am now in the third gear and I'm fully accelerating so you can see hopefully how fast this is accelerating this is pretty fast accelerating it goes up to about 27 uh, kilometers and then goes back with the cruise control when I release it it's now in the cruise control you can see we are approaching this overpass here I'm showing you this overpass thing once again you can see I'm pretty close here and I'm fully accelerating at the beginning it's not much doing but then it's going pretty fast
so the bus some wind unfortunately which uh, blocked me or stopped me a little bit but apart from that was working really good on the other hand when you go down uh, like from an overpass or something like that you have to be really careful to use the brake here i'm going to show you that You have to just brake a little bit. You have to be really careful not to overdo with this brake here. Maybe better just uh, release this thing here that you are definitely not on a cruise control and then use the manual brake instead of this thing. If you're too fast, especially uh, yeah the brake is working more the faster you go. When you're too fast and you're pushing down the brake uh, fully I can tell you this is going insane it can easily flip you over I don't know how they did that but the brake is insane it's really super strong uh, so better especially at the beginning use the manual brake then while we are just normal cruising it's pretty comfortable usually as long as the surface is not too rough you can see that here now there's a section which is a little bit more rough, you can hear that. By the way, you can even do some off-road a little bit, not too crazy, but just a little bit as you can see. It's usually not a problem. But once I've been getting stuck and uh, I almost flipped, so you have to be really careful, don't overdo. So let's try this thing here, it's a little bit crazy, I don't know if you can manage to do that. Yeah, somehow I managed that. I hope you have been able to hear that, that some of these bumps can be really harsh you can really feel them in your feet in your uh, yeah knees not so much but definitely feet but apart from that when it's smooth like this it's really nice to drive now next bumps so now we are on a rather smooth surface not too smooth not too rough so it's uh, pretty much fun to go like this straight you can even do some fun stuff a little bit but you have to be careful <laughs> don't overdo with this thing it's not very stable but you can do that it can be fun to try a little bit but really don't do too much it can be really really dangerous But it can be really fun. We are going now is 25 kilometers. Yeah, I'm going a little bit slower so you can understand me better. Now again some bumps. Yeah, you can go really far, definitely. The listing says uh, you can go about 12 miles. Uh, based on my observations, I have been reaching 13.5 miles uh, even on almost everything top speed so that's a definitely good sign for the battery and the high speed again was around 27 kilometers uh, yeah when you just push but when it goes into cruise control it's between 25 and 26 kilometers the good thing is also that you can go almost uh, full speed uh, to the very end of the battery I mean maybe in the last 20% or 10% the speed the maximum speed will go uh, down a little bit but uh, just at the very end it will really reduce it maybe to 15 or 10 kilometer but you can I would say about uh, reach 90% of the maximum distance and you can still go full speed that's really cool so I think as a transportation thing it works pretty good for the fun thing yeah the stability would have to be a little bit better i mean and also you cannot release the handlebar also there is really no suspension i mean the wheels they are not filled with air i mean because they are so thick they provide some kind of a little bit of a damping but really not too much just a little bit like here on this surface it works uh, as a damping method but uh, if you have 
too high bumps it's definitely not working so if you have just uh, like four hundred dollars and you want to buy something real fun uh, not as a transportation thing but just to have some fun maximum fun for four hundred dollars then go and buy an electric skateboard like the cool and fun which i've also been testing yeah this is awesome it makes much more fun than this thing here i mean this is nice this is funny maybe for five minutes ten minutes or so but if you want to have more fun for hours then go with an electric skateboard or longboard so for me a uh, good transportation mode you have to be careful with the brakes and with the cruise control uh, but apart from that really works and uh, I'll put down the link to the Amazon listing down into the description so you can check it out order it right from there if you like it and I hope I've been able to help you a little bit with this video if you have any questions or comments just write to the comment section below and I'm always happy to talk about these things and if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe my channel thanks for watching and see you next time